Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, the entire Democrat basically caucus in Congress literally bent the knee to George Floyd and to Black Lives Matter. They quite literally did that. And, was that, a, and that was a African. bad thing? I think it was a stupid thing. <sighs> Filming us for like B-roll? Stand by. That was intense. <laughs> All right, here we go. You guys feeling ready? It's happening. Hi, and welcome to our conversation about what it means to be Asian American. I'm Krishna. My parents came here from India. I was born here. So I identify as South Asian American or Asian American. And I just wanted to call out that you know, we're talking about the largest continent on the planet with multiple countries, ethnicities, sub-ethnicities within it. So we did our best to try to get a diverse mix of opinions and backgrounds on this panel, but you can't get everyone's opinion. So as we start, I wanna get a quick poll. How many of you guys think the term Asian American is useful? So that's one, two, three, four, five. We got a couple 50-50s. What about if we were to add Asian American Pacific Islander? I guess I'm curious to hear why, and maybe the way we can do that is going around the room and talking about who we are, where we came from, and what that term means to us, and what you think it might mean to the rest of the world. So. I'm Yu Ling, um, and I would identify myself as an Asian American. I feel really strongly about being um, an immigrant. I'm first gen, or I say first and a half gen, because I was born in China, and then we immigrated to New York, and then to San Francisco. And I think that like the term Asian American it's complicated because it applies to so many different identities, ethnicities, and cultures. It's a helpful term when, you know, you don't really know what else to kind of, you kind of just like lump everybody into like one term. And I don't think there's any issue with it being um, Asian American and Pacific Islander either, because that's just more inclusive in my opinion. So there's a sense of community amongst people from different cultures. Yeah, I think it's difficult because like, you can't really put it into words. It's applicable to such a wide range of things and like, you know, we're not a monolith. It's complex. Yes. Yeah, I was born in Manila, Philippines. Interesting. And what does that heritage mean to you? You know, I'm a little conflicted because sometimes I just want to be American. I don't want to specify the fact that I'm Asian, but at the same time, it's like someone looks at you, they're going to say that you're Asian, so you say you're Asian American. I don't like the idea of separating the Pacific Islander just because for so long I was told I wasn't Asian, that I was a Pacific Islander. Hmm. I just think it's all encompassing we are Asian. Micah. I feel very prideful about the uh, Asian Pacific Islander. Um, I live in San Diego now, but I'm originally from Honolulu, Hawaii, and my dad's born and raised from Kona. I am so close with my family. Just growing up, it's hard to explain, but being from Hawaii, like the Aloha spirit is real. Being around your family, having that common courtesy for community is just something that I'm really proud of. And you, and you feel like as it relates to Asian American and Pacific Islander, these are two things that kind of go together in some ways? Yeah, they do, they do. How? So the thing about Hawaii is that it's a really huge collection of different types of ethnicities, and there's a lot of Asian influence in Hawaii as well. A lot of different people who are there are from Korea, China, Japan, and so I just consider them family as well. Well, good to meet you. Tell me about yourself, Vince. Genetically, I'm a quarter Italian, 75% Vietnamese, but I, I'm really, really with Teddy Roosevelt on this one. I don't believe in the hyphenated American thing. I identify as American. I consider myself an American. Sure, genetically, I'm mostly Asian. I don't go around thinking I'm an Asian American because I think that, especially considering the fact that America today is increasingly a more and more diverse country, which is what it is, the only way that's going to hold together is if people can, to some extent, all identify as being part of the same nation, part of the same creed to an extent. I mean, that's just the way I would view it. Vish, you're up. I'm 100% Hindu, Indian American. I was born in Brooklyn. My parents are from India. I personally just describe myself as American. Mm -hmm. I find, like Vince said, you know, the hyphenated American thing, I think it's by definition divisive mm. when you're dividing the identity. I prefer to call myself American. I don't call myself Indian American, Asian American, though, when people ask like, oh, well, what are you? I'll say, well, I'm of Indian heritage, mm -hmm. but I was born in Brooklyn. 
Yes, sir. I probably identify as Asian American. I also like my experience. My mom is from Japan. She immigrated to America. So I do truly feel that I am a part of the Asian American experience where, you know, at home, it's a Japanese household. It's a Japanese culture because、um, I was predominantly also raised by my mom, too. And then also, we happen to live in America. And I think there is a very unique perspective in that. As well as I'm a proud Asian American, I'm a proud Black American, too. I'm a proud biracial American. And I think there is definitely also a need for us to be able to say Asian American, especially because we are often seen as not American or not American enough. But then you go back to Asia and they're like, oh, you're so American. So it's just like, well, who am I? <laughs> being between cultures in a way or straddling cultures, being part of two cultures. Yeah, being part of two cultures. I'm Asian, I'm American, I'm Asian American. Well, nice to meet you. Joyce. So I'm a Taiwanese. Asian American. I identify as Asian American, but at the same time, I think the term Asian American and Asian Pacific Islander they have to be separated because when we go to colleges and apply to get in, we're on different socioeconomic pathways. So actually, the term Asian Pacific Islander would actually get you in more than someone who does East Asian because I believe now they separate the two. Well, there's a lot to unpack there, and I think that's、yeah. what we'll try to do today. But it's good to meet you.、So、I guess this is a funny question, but like, do you think the average American, when meeting you, would be like, oh, yeah, you're Taiwanese? No, they think I'm Chinese. I'm <laughs> Taiwanese <laughs> or Korean, but basically I'm Asian. They always ask, where am I from because of the way I look. And they ask, like, where are you really from? <laughs> yes, yes. And I'm like, always, I'm American. I get that a lot too. Helen. Hi, my name is Ellen. I'm Korean American. I came from Korea when I was eight years old, got on a plane by myself, not speaking a word of English. Didn't know white people were real. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, it was a、um, huge culture shock. My parents had already immigrated, so I was joining them.、Hmm. I like to be identifying myself as a Korean American woman, and I recognize the importance of Asian American Pacific Islander. Definitions are always constantly changing as we, as society, Constantly evolving. I don't like to just consider myself American because any, when anybody in this country looks at me, they don't just see American, they always see Asian first.、Hmm. Instead of using that as a thing that holds me back, I say it proudly. And it's taken time to accept my identity, to really、um, know that that's sort of an umbrella term to open the door into the conversation. I know it's not possible to encompass all of us because Asia is so big, right? But in order for us to be seen and heard, we have to start somewhere. So I think it's a good term for that. Ziad. I'm Ziad. I use he, him pronouns. And I am Bangladeshi American and I'm Asian American. The reason why I you know, is lukewarm about the term Asian American in so far as its usefulness is that I don't actually often refer to myself as Asian American despite like, fully believing that I am. Because to Yu Ling's point, oftentimes I think people have a perception of what Asian American looks like, right? And sometimes that leaves out South Asians. Sometimes that leaves、yeah. out Central Asians. Sometimes that leaves out huge parts of the world. Me personally, like, I lean into my hyphenated identities, right? I am American and I am Muslim and I am Bangladeshi and I am Asian, right? And I am all of these things at once and I'm not one more than the other, but I take pride in all of these things. And I think that for me, I find power in that insofar as when I look at this country, I think it is so damaging, right? So saddening that sometimes this country makes us choose. I mean, something what you point out is that we kind of all have a dual consciousness or are. Dual citizens of this country and the world, which is to say, we go home, we might have a different culture, a different food, a different language that we speak, we go to school, and we have friends who might not share or understand what that language culture is, and we have a desire to both be true to the heritage, but then also be accepted, successful, and otherwise in the non Asian American world that we live in. Assimilation. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Is, is it a burden? Is it an opportunity? Assimilation, I think I would define that as in part, I think necessary to an extent because we are forced to in order to navigate this country. So I would say learning the language,、um, you know, learning how to like properly behave, for example, that's in part. Kind of assimilation, making sure that you are、um, in line. Kosher, kosher in this society. And I think, in part, 
that means survival. I think assimilation is not just a great thing, it's a necessary thing. Huh. No society can hold together where people have nothing in common, they don't speak the same language, they don't practice the same things. And you know, you may look at something like just food habits or what you eat and think that's fairly frivolous, but the truth of the matter is that on a broader level, when we're talking about more big picture things, differences in race, culture, religion, all these things, the, people have fought wars, violent wars, killed each other over these things for thousands of years. If America is to hold together, Assimilation, not just good or bad, necessary. I don't think it's gonna be possible for America to survive as a stable functioning society if people don't to some degree say, well, here's what we're gonna commonly agree upon. But who gets to choose it? The majority culture, I suppose. And what's the people, majority culture? The people with power. And who's people with power? Who's people with power. Stop. White people. Well, I don't, I don't know I'm if that's- I'm gonna say it, yeah. white people, it's okay. I don't know if that's necessarily so true. I mean, Wait, can you, you unpack? Yeah. yeah. I don't, Let's I don't elaborate. Think, I don't think a particularly white quote unquote interest controls things like In America. pop culture. Do you believe well, white think, supremacy exists? I think there are people who believe in it. I think there's people who all believe that their race is superior. So you don't believe in white supremacy? Do you believe Do America is a white supremacist race? state? No, not at all. And not found no that. white supremacist state would even like allow us to be doing this. Like I don't, I don't understand. It's so a white supremacist. There's just KKK people walking. I mean, Actually, I go around New York City. I notice that like I guess Brooklyn a little bit different. Most of the people here are not white, and they're doing their thing. So I don't. Understand what does doing their thing mean to you? Going to work. Are they making? Working, the, are they making the same amount of money? Uh, well, are they getting the same access to opportunity? I think they're getting great access to opportunity. Please unpack it. Are well, they? Are they equivalent? Are our communities and communities that are leading culture, to your point, because you point to popular culture as something where, in your view, white people don't have the power when the reality is it is the white executives who are profiting off of and exploiting predominantly black and brown bodies for their financial gain to then parade to us and tell us that we're thriving when the reality is it is women of color and it is black folks and it is Asian American folks and it is Hispanic folks and it is people from marginalized communities who are disproportionately being impacted by every adverse thing that society is facing while the few at the top who don't represent our communities, right, are profiting, there are massive disparities based on race, based on class, based on gender, based on all of these things that shouldn't exist. Well, nobody denies that there's disparities or that, or that. Well, let's, let's have Vince respond. Or that, I think the question is, do they exist because of supposed white supremacy? And when I look at the fact that, you know, virtually every corporation institution bends the knee to diversity, celebrates every single heritage month, um, you know, has all these programs, every single one, toe the line for Black Lives Matter. I don't look at that what and is say, the line? I don't look at that and say conservative white people are in power in this country. As a matter of fact, I'd argue to a large extent, you can talk about, you know, what race or whatever people are, but is like a supposedly conservative white interest in power in America. I would I honestly say I think it's the opposite of well, that. I, I, I want to that. clarify one thing. You can be liberal and still a white supremacist, right? Yes. Like, I, I would be very clear, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. doesn't necessarily mean conservative white power is the predominant fo folks in power. I think it could span a lot of political yes. ideologies and still have these things embedded in how you govern and how you lead and how you make decisions. However, when you talk about bending the knee, yeah. That is a, a wild way, I think, to look at society finally trying in some ways to right the wrongs of its It's not so Ill. wild. I mean, even like your supposedly white politicians, you look at what they did in 2020, they quite literally bent their knee. Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, the entire Democrat basically caucus in Congress literally bent the knee to George Floyd and to Black Lives Matter. They quite literally did that. And, and, was that a, and that was a African. bad thing? I think it was a stupid thing. I Why? think it was it was just ridiculous pandering so to black a lives terrorist do not movement ran by. Yeah, please. Yeah. Black lives do not matter. Or? I do think that Black Lives Matter. I Wait, don't support the movement do you known believe, as Black Lives do Matter. You, you ever say all lives matter? Of course. As a Christian, there I absolutely it is. believe all, all lives, lives matter. matter. Absolutely. Well, let me put this back into some more concrete terms. So, I guess to to try to understand the conflict here that you guys are having, what role do you think Asian Americans have as far as the larger injustices and racism? that this country has exhibited and has pushed it forward in the 200 years prior to even our arrival. But I guess the easiest way to make it something to talk about is the concept of the model minority myth. When you hear that word, what does it mean to you? So the model minority myth, you know, after World War II, they used us to separate other people of color. They used our race to say that we were the best race, that we were the model minority because we were the smartest, we got the best jobs, we did these things, and we were able to assimilate to what their idea of what they wanted. They wanted an example to use 
uh, of people of color that they could then use against all the other people of color. And what they also did is they caused infighting between our communities so that we wouldn't look at the actual problem, which was white supremacy. When I think of the model minority myth, I grew up wanting to be white. I fucking hate that about myself. Like, it is so embarrassing. Okay, so statistically, it is true that Asians, right, on average, make more money it, like in terms of medium, make more money, better test scores, get into better colleges, all that stuff. I think the question is, why is that? And I don't know if model minority, whatever that label wants That's to That's actually mean. a not, myth because not, we cannot be- um... Well, no, listen, well, let me finish my point. We need to observe what makes people successful and unsuccessful. And I think when you look at trends that are generally true in the Asian community, not of everyone, but are generally true, usually you have families that are sticking together. You have, um, you know, people, are taught to work hard in school, not get into trouble. I think that translates to why Asians on mass are successful. And I don't think you have to be Asian or white for that matter to not have kids out of wedlock, not, you know, commit crime, what? not not cause trouble, what is whatever happening? it is. It's just a matter of like, well, common sense, that's what makes people successful. And if that's so-called assimilation, having a nuclear family, buying a house, going to school, whatever it is, then yeah, okay, call me a pro-assimilation then. I think there's a difference between assimilation and erasure. Yes. The way that you're kind of going about it seems like, okay, like, you know, of course, like, we want to be in community with people. And I don't think there's a problem with being in community with people from different backgrounds. That's not the issue. It's also embracing the diversity that we inherently have and accepting that and being okay with that and celebrating that. It's very idealistic, I think, but I think we should acknowledge the fact that diversity, quote unquote, is not a factor that is our strength. It's not a factor that historically or even in the current strengthens societies. People don't come together, form societies, form families, form communities because they have nothing in common. They come together and do those things because they have something in common, right? You talk about race in such black and white terms. The way you talk about it is it's either with America, whatever your definition of America, or, or not. You're t talking in very black and white terms, and that's actually the problem in discussing race because we're Asian Americans. We're neither black, we're neither white. When you're having a race discussion, you can't be talking about in such like lines. Yeah. Everything well, is in the gray. The more in common that a society has with one another, the more likely they are to work together and build things okay, in society I hear and you. not constantly be fighting each other and at odds with each other. Did but, you think the Japanese internment was a good thing? Because that was a real assimilation situation. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, I, Do you I don't, recognize I don't. that the term assimilation has negative history and facts associated with that word? So we do have to be careful in how we choose, because assimilation for people of color have not been good to us, historically. That's factual. So let me We're ask you. We're discussing the model minority no, 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 myth and the Japanese fact that- Japanese internment is a classic example of assimilating Asian Americans. No, so it's not. It's a classic example of internment. I mean, they, they intern well, people. Why? Like, why? Not, yes. to why did they in that to- um, Why did they intern them? Because, because they saw them as other. Because they saw them as dangerous. Not really. Be, be, well, yes, they saw them as dangerous because, and I don't agree with it, but left-wing president, FDR at the time, saw it as a national security so risk. So you're a Republican, right? So you're right-wing, right? Wing, right? I, wanna, I, wanna, I wanna make sure that we move this way to okay. keep talking about it. And thank you for all the passion on this. And I think there's a lot to unpack. Uh, Joyce, tell me about your f feelings about the model minority myth. What, is, what does it make you think about? For me, like, I don't think race should be an issue in any anything. Like, when we want to make a decision, we should not put race as a factor. Living in New York City, we're in the melting pot of the world, so I haven't actually experienced any of these biases. And if we keep continuing to live on, remembering how history was, we're never going to move further. So I identify myself as American. And in this country, it's the only country where a homeless person can be a millionaire the next day. So based on capitalism, we all have an opportunity. And we should not use race as a factor in either getting ahead or depriving ourselves of opportunities. I have a question directly related to the fact that you live in New York, right? Yeah. And you're an Asian woman. There have been significant high crimes towards Asian women that were all over the news. Did that affect you? And how, what were your thoughts on that? The I mean, government it, the is telling us that it's Asian hate, but that's not the real issue. The real issue is actually that these people were mentally ill and they were let out. For both can or, be the issue, right? Yeah, it, it can, be, it can but, simultaneously exist as issues. You can't say that it's Asian hate and use that as propaganda. To, propaganda? I, I feel like also <laughs> to just say that these people propaganda. are mentally ill is a kind of an ableist argument too, because there's plenty of people who are mentally ill 
who are not going out and killing like Asian people on the street. All these attacks that you're seeing the videos of in San Francisco, New York City, newsflash, they're not being prosecuted as hate crimes. So the more correct way to look at it is what is the primary perpetrator of violence mm. against mm. Asians overall, mm. right? Because if we talk about these videos, we have to count them in the, the statistics, and we're not doing that. And when we do that, we find, well, I'll tell you this, the yeah. plurality top perpetrator of violence against Asians, number one, is not happening in rural America, and number two, is not being done by white people. So is it black people that are doing it? Like, <laughs> is it the black and brown people that are doing it? No, that's statistics. exactly just inherently violent. Like, I'm just not, say I'm it. Not, I'm not, I didn't say that. All I, I said beat was, around it. Just all say I said, it. If it's not white people said, or Asian people, all who is I, it? All I said, I didn't say anything about, oh, inherently violent. All I said is, is that if well, it's now a... Now you did. If it's no, a, no one accused you of that, and now you did. If it's a white... So, like, your bias is slipping out there. It's clear you want to say it. You should just say it. Can anyone let me talk here? When it comes to Asian hate, the perpetrator is not a white supremacist anymore. Correct. That's all I'm saying. So that's the problem. Like, we don't want to blame one race for violence when that's actually not true. Uh, is it white people? Is it white people? It is white people. Are these attacks it happening It is white in people. I literally looked up statistics. You do not have to be white to perpetuate white supremacy. No one's saying it's not hard to govern a heterogeneous society, but it is possible to do a lot better than the way that we're fucking doing it right now. It's like, we've banked on this myth of white adjacency more than this model minority myth of like, instead of aligning ourselves with the black community who've been fighting for yeah. racial justice yes. and liberation, right, and, and acknowledging our own privilege and putting our bodies on the line to fight for these movements, instead, we banked on white adjacency, and here we are still being pushed. Yes. What, what, what is, for, okay, right. first of all, what exactly is white adjacency? Is it working hard, having families? I didn't, no, I mean, no, like, no, I don't, no, no. I don't understand what the no, issue is. Actually, but then number two, wait, let me finish my point. I certainly. Think, I think it is gaslighting when, again, the majority of violent attacks against Asians are not being perpetrated by white people to blame white supremacy. White supremacy as a construct is this idea like that the norm of American is whiteness. Yes. That whiteness is the default. Standard. That whiteness is the standard that we all ought to aspire to. And we deviate from that. It's not just talking that, about KKK. Yeah. It's not talking about lynchings. It, it's about a mentality that I'm we have absorbed. I'm gonna, I'm gonna interrupt for a second. Yuling, what's, what's going through your head right now? Model minority myth, if I'm not wrong, I actually think that Asian Americans did create that first and foremost to push the notion that we are dangerous away. First to say that like, no, we belong here because I promise you we will not cause harm to you. And that has trickled down now into becoming almost a curse. Historically it was used first to be like, we're not dangerous, we're, we're just, we're American, we are American. But later on it has moved into this sort of um, weaponized term slash almost like idea concept where we get to say like, oh, because we are model minority, like we're not like dangerous and we're not this. And I think about this a lot with class, like a lot of Asian women who are sex workers. Who are we exactly. actually taking into account when we think about model minority? And I think that that term really applies to a very specific amount or that idea of what that looks like is very specific. Because when I think of the Asian Americans that I know, I don't think that they're worried about whether or not they look like model minority. I think they're just trying to survive. Mm. Vish? I see you percolating over there. What's going percolating. through your percolating. through your brain? I don't know. I don't understand why everybody's so hurt about like being described as a model minority. For me, it's like, well, I want to be the best. I want to be the smartest. I want to be the toughest. The model minority thing, I've never thought about it because I'm too focused on trying to be a model American. When I say the word "stop Asian hate," what does it mean to you? Scam. I agree. Why? I see it as the same way as the BLM organization. It's just a cudgel meant to divide Americans on racial, like racialized language and racialized ideas that are not really congruent with reality. The Stop Asian Hate movement, you know, makes a big fuss about white supremacy. So I find that to be a scam in a similar way that BLM makes a boogeyman out of cops and white cops and white people and white supremacy and all that. It's all the same language and all the same sort of ideas that are being used to divide Americans and basically put Asians in fear of something that I personally do not think exists. Who agrees with Vish? No, I don't. <laughs> Raise your hands up high, let's hear it. Why? I mean, I agree with everything he says because they're basically weaponizing it and making us victims, but we're not victims. We have friends that are of different races. If you start to use the word hate, hate will continue. Hate is a very strong word. So even when it's stop Asian hate, you're still like, wait, it has Asian hate in here, we should not even consider it as it's a serious divisive. thing? It's divisive. 
Well, um, it's referring to murders, yeah. people getting attacked in broad daylight, elders getting bashed in the head. I, I fear for my mother-in-law going on walks. I ask her to make sure she's not walking around when it's getting dark. So it's very real. Getting murdered for being Asian is as hateful as it gets, is it not? Why are we afraid to just say out loud, let's stop Asian hate? It is happening in astronomical numbers. Studies have shown the increase. And where did it come from? Right after the COVID blast of people saying, oh, we, it, it's the Chinese virus. It, there was a direct correlation to that Asian hate. It, it just didn't, it didn't come out of thin air. So it really minimizes our experiences when you say it doesn't exist. Here's a radical idea. Okay, you guys ready? No, I'm not. So there's a lot of violence happening. A lot of it's against Asian people. A lot of it is happening in cities. Crazy idea, I know. Then maybe it's not a good idea to let criminals out of jail. Uh, maybe it's not a good idea to defund the police, neuter the police's ability to have any degree of law and order in our streets. And maybe you wouldn't have so much violence happening against so many different types of vulnerable people. I mean, this is just the truth of the situation. You know, we can talk about this correlation with COVID. Maybe that's true to an extent. It's also true Whoa, wait, so that maybe it's- Maybe that's true to an extent. What do you mean? Because it's also true that it's been climbing over the past year or two, whatever. That's also around the same time that we had all of these, you know, anti-police movements. A lot of but it's also around the same policy. time that Donald Trump was calling it the China virus, right? Well, he's not calling it anymore, and it looks like this stuff is still happening. The problem with saying stop Asian hate and us just saying stigma, whatever, is that it misses the real core of the problem. The real core of the problem is that there is lawlessness and mass violence and mass crime happening in cities. I think that I the just... stop Asian hate movement comes from woke left-wing social movement to kind of make it into this argument of like minorities being persecuted when I don't think that's the core of the problem. I think the core of the problem is like, it's just dangerous in our cities. Originally when you asked what stop Asian hate means to you, the first word that popped in my mind was ignorance. It goes beyond more about more than the way that people were just like acting out and attacking people, some people were avoiding other people. Some people were like, oh no, you can't go over to that house because they're Asian, they're Japanese, they're Chinese. So that also is a, a version of hate. So like before we go too far into like the specifics of like crime, there was even just, you know, social injustices. And that is one of the things that I think that in, people might overlook. You like? In regards to just the term stop Asian hate, the reason why I feel like it falls short is not because of the sentiment. I think that there is definitely prejudice and absolutely like hate against Asians um, in this country. But I think sometimes that we view that violence very like specific, like I'm gonna beat you up because you're Asian and like that is the violence. And I think sometimes like on a larger scale that violence also shows up in ways in which like housing, education, healthcare, a lot of that. And so now let's move on to the main event, because a lot of what's behind the disagreements that we're having today seems to be related to politics. How many of you here would say that you're progressive or liberal? Raise of hands. And how many would say conservative or not progressive and liberal? Undecided? Okay. Are Asians invisible in American politics? Are they visible? Do, do Asian Americans have political power? Let's take visibility. Not visible enough. But that is a consequence of the mentality towards politics for a lot of Asians. You don't participate in the system, nobody's gonna care what you have to say, period. Which is why I've made it a point to participate in the system. You know, I don't go around saying, well, I'm Asian, that's why I deserve to be here. But just m me being in the room is a step above what's kind of the, the sort of awareness, the political awareness of specifically the Indian community, in my opinion. You know, that's, that's been my experience. So I don't think that they're visible enough. And the reason they're not visible is because they don't participate and do the work behind it. Is so that my, engagement, civic yeah, engagement. Yeah, exactly. Politics. Yeah, I, I'm gonna have to agree with you on that in terms of, I think it's more than that, but I do agree as lack of engagement or, you know, claiming to be apolitical. I think when, when Kamala became um, vice president, there wasn't really that much support that I saw from the Asian community. And she's, she's our first Asian American woman to be elected in such a high position of office. So where is the support? Just because she may not look a specific way. So what you're saying is that the broader Asian American community, which might include East Asians and otherwise, didn't speak up enough for having a South Asian person like Kamala Harris. 
of mixed mm-hmm. race become vice president of the United States. So yeah. Divisions within itself. Yes. yes, yes. Like, I did not see very many East Asians come out and be like, you know, Asian American representation. But I saw plenty of black people come out and be like, black representation, yeah. you know? So there is definitely a lot of divisiveness within our own communities that we need to, we need to understand and recognize. Being Asian is not just being East Asian. Maybe Asians didn't feel represented by Kamala Harris. Maybe people just don't like Kamala Harris. Like she's one of the least popular vice presidents, I believe in like recent history. I don't know if it's like an Asian exclusive thing. I just think a lot of people why don't you think they, a fan. Why don't you think they like her? She comes off as obnoxious and pretentious and they don't like her politics. Can I piggyback off that? Uh, I think Kamala Harris does not get the love from the Asian community because she picks and chooses when she wants to be whatever her identity is. When she's on t- TV, on camera, you know, I'm a black woman, blah, 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 blah. But she only claims her Indian and Asian background when she's in the fundraisers with the rich Indians. She's doing it to herself. She's dividing her identity by playing up, you know, code switching. I know AOC likes to use the word code switching. Code switching to the black community when she's on camera and then code switching to the Asian community when she's raising money. Don't be surprised if, you know, you only come around when you're asking for a check and then we're not on, we're not in the streets, you know, as hard as you would like us to be. But then again, you don't go on camera wearing a dot on your head and the jasmine in your hair. Right? And so, and wearing a sari, show me a picture of Kamala in a sari. Right? When was the last time? I've seen Justin Trudeau wearing Indian clothes before her. <laughs> you know what I mean? So don't, don't give me the nonsense, right? Like, it's her, her fault that Asians don't get behind her. Um, for her trying to win over people, do you think that maybe as a choice to not represent that, to be more relatable, to the masses could be the reason why she acts the way that she acts. I don't know. Are you saying Asians are not relatable to the American public? Yes, to some, yeah. Um. No, to some. Being in a position where you have this generalization of how a standard American is supposed to be, and then all of a sudden, depending on the social climate, there is a lot of pressure on people to be a specific person. And so when you're someone in that light, trying to get support from different people, not even saying that she's right or wrong, I'm just saying that could possibly be a motive. She did it to herself. If you just called yourself American, you wouldn't be in this mess. I, right? I think, but you got, you, you got, you, you, you switch the identity based on the need. And I, that is where, that is the problem. I think Kamala exists. It's politically and expedient. You kind of saw this when Biden shows her. She exists to basically appeal to like the woke diversity mob. Like that's the truth. Biden said, I'm gonna pick a woman, and then he said, I'm gonna pick a woman of color, quote unquote, ended up with Kamala Harris. And I just think that a lot of people outside of Ivy League educations find that stuff off-putting. In general America, a lot of people of all different colors are very off-put by her entire political presentation and existence because they're off put by the women, diversity, black people, like, they're off like put <laughs> by a woman in leadership. I, I want to chime well, in here. Uh, well, I, appar- I, appar- I, apparently, <laughs> even like women of color and black women, even like as we talked about, approval rating in general sucks. I agree. Why? Because let's, she let's, sucks. Let's get off like the that. approval rating for a second. I want to hold on one point of yours, which is okay. she's a token. That's that's what I heard from you. Sure. I think Biden chose her absolutely as a token. I, so I want to know how you respond to sort of what Vince was saying that Kamala Harris effectively was a token. A token pick because demographic boxes and specifically an Asian American demographic box. I feel like any time a person of color gets chosen, we're looked at as a token, especially in institutions. Um, it's historical, like it's new to us, right? So in one sense, I think there's some truth to it, even to in our own communities, I think, is she a token? Like we second guess ourselves. You mm. start to second guess, mm. are you worth it? Because you're constantly being Am questioned. I qualified? D- did you get here because uh, you were a diversity higher or, you know, uh, it, this is the existence that we live in right now. And so Kamala Harris is actually very representative of what we face. You can say token all day long, but you can't take that away. People will scrutinize her. However, what about the the other people, other 47 presidents who've definitely done their fair share, I'd say probably worse things. Yes, <laughs> who, absolutely. Who are not nitpicked for what they are wearing or, you know, like maybe not fitting in enough because they already fit in. They're, or they're, for being white. They're, yeah. They're, <laughs> Yet they're, another white person. Yeah, like a lot of people don't agree with, you know, her politics. And like, I, I don't want to take like 
her credentials away. Yeah. Because she 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 earned it. She she wasn't just a diversity pick. She was picked because she also put in the work. She also put in the work. I'd like to hear from the women in the panel about the specifics that we're talking about. Because not only is she the first black and Asian American vice president, she's also the first woman. Choice. I disagree with Kamala's politics, I'll say it. But at the same time, she's representative of a woman. And I think we should give her some some award for that. Like, credit? You know, uh, like credit, yes, that's the word <laughs> that I was looking for. This is my point exactly with plain identity politics. Like, who cares if she's black? Who cares if she's a woman? Like, if she got there on her own merit, that's the what's important. You like? I haven't really thought too much about her being a token so much. I think I'm more interested in, well, what will you do now that you're in office? Will things still change? Or is yeah, it Yeah, what would that look like? Yeah, and it's it's great because obviously you do want the optics. You hope, you do hope, and you put a lot of that pressure on that person um, who you feel might represent you. If I wanted to talk really about representation, I'd be like, put somebody poor up there. I don't want anybody rich running the government. Sorry. like. You know what I mean? It's just kind of like, what's the pulse on your country, on your actual citizen? So that's what I'm interested in. Let's talk about higher education and affirmative action. So I think a lot of our conversation, the rubber hits the road on this topic. And because plaintiffs challenging affirmative action rules, there are Asian Americans who are banding together to do that. I think of affirmative action as a scam. It's an excuse to make race-based hiring decisions. And, and I think that that's wrong. And I think that everything should be based on merit. The students that are picked by affirmative action are top tier students. Yeah. They're not like some D plus students that are getting picked just based on race. They already are performing at a very top level themselves and proven themselves to be picked. Despite systemic barriers. I think to a reasonable extent, you could say, okay, if someone grew up in like total poverty and they didn't have the same opportunities, then you can lower the standard a little bit. What I would still say is I think there has to be some proof still of capability. Right now, there's a left-wing movement to remove SAT and standardized testing. So in my opinion, sure, the SAT may not be a perfect test. I think it's decent. That is what actually levels the playing field is saying, we have to take the same test. It doesn't matter what, uh, what your teacher, how hard they grade, you pay them off, private school education, you know. That, like, th like, that's the environment where it's like totally even. Sure, it's one way to measure intelligence, but that's also assuming that intelligence can only be assessed in one way. How do you compare someone who is just as smart or, you know, maybe even if they didn't get the SAT score as like their classmate who literally paid a tutor for four Every years. Every single day, yep. <laughs> you know, versus, versus this person, they took the test twice in their life be and then they put a bunch of their savings into paying for the test. Yeah. <laughs> How are you supposed to compare these people and say that one is more deserving? So I think to level the playing field, like we need to improve our local schools. Not every school is the same. Like if you're in a, in a poor community, you don't have the best teachers. So we want to hold all the teachers accountable for giving uh, top grade education so everybody's leveled. And then it wouldn't matter which race or socioeconomic um, position that you're taking. I don't agree with like getting rid of affirmative action altogether. I think it needs reform. What about like legacy kids? I think that it's it's great for to take into account, you know, the systems in power that have um, intentionally made sure that certain people and specifically black and brown people cannot have access to education. I think that's a great way to try to level that playing field at the least. If a yeah, kid we don't can get see in... a fuss being made about legacy kids ever. I, when do you ever hear about that? Exactly, it's that like people get a lot more up in arms, I would say, when it's like, oh, well, so you just got in because of your, you know, race. What do you think the future of Asian Americans in America and American politics is? The paradigm we are going through now, especially with our relations with different ethnic groups and everything, I think that we are headed towards Balkanization and the future of America is starting to look like Bosnia. And so I, I want to avoid that. You know, within our generation, at least what I've seen, a lot more Asian Americans who are interested in politics, who are interested in bringing more representation and bringing more, saying like, we've had enough. You know, this is not how we need to be treated, how we deserve to be treated. So like, I, I think in terms of involvement, there will be a higher involvement of Asian Americans. And also just the mere fact that we had Asian American representation, whether it's Kamala or, um, Andrew Yang just even running, that shows people that, hey, like maybe, like, maybe that could be me. Yeah, I'm allowed. I think that one of the biggest things that representation does is it says, 
I'm allowed to do that because I see someone that looks like me do that. Yeah. And I think just exactly what you said is that, you know, with Black Lives Matter, Asian hate, we learned that if we work together as people of color, yes. and that's where I think, yes. that's what it means to me is that we as a group working together get more done. Yes. And that if we support each other and we do this, we can get more of ourselves up there. I think you will definitely see some people actually move to the right because of that. How big will it be? I don't really know. Probably not as big as a lot of Republicans hope, but I think it will happen. What do I think about the future? I'm gonna be hopeful because I think that oftentimes, like we are characterized as just angry, right? And yes, that our politic is yes. and that our politic isn't that rooted. Makes me angry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but and our politic isn't rooted in love and isn't rooted in community, yes. isn't rooted in hope. And 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 I, and I hope that it is, right? And so what I'm hopeful about is that we can sit here and name politicians who look like us and sound like us. Yes. And that wasn't the case when I was a kid. I didn't think that that was possible. So from where I'm sitting, like I think the future of Asian American leadership looks like telling our own stories in community with other people who haven't had their Told yet. Mm -hmm. yes. Just from seeing um, sort of the agitation within our own communities, I think just like with movements and like being tired of staying silent, I think that's part of going back to also that model minority myth of like, I I'm gonna mind my business, I'm just gonna do my mm. thing. And you guys just fight it out over there. You know, I think that like seeing the passion kind of jump out yes. is very beautiful to witness. Um, and so hopefully I think that the future, at least that I envision, is one where we can maybe see more humanity in each other. Mm. I think that as an Asian American, a lot of how I've viewed myself has been through a lens of self-hatred mm. um, and shame. With the moment that we're in right now, even this conversation that we've been able to have, I think that um, we're not, we're, the difference that I hopefully feel is that we're not gonna sit on the sidelines and be like, that's not my business. I think now we're ready to be like, that is my business and I'm gonna be vocal about it. So I don't know what that looks like in the future, but I think that my hope is that it looks more like community care. You know, white children in this country grew up with the mentality, I can be president one day. We didn't have that. <laughs> and, and we're just now like, oh, could it be us? What I hear a lot in your reasons for being Republican or thinking the way you do, is that you don't want to be seen as a victim. I, I see that, I hear that very loud and clear. And it's rooted in kind of that logic that pits you against yourself. Mm. That you, you, ha you constantly walk around with this idea, I'm not a victim. But it doesn't just end with you. We are people that come from community. That yeah. One of the things, even though we are not a monolith, a lot of our cultures can unite in the fact that we believe in community. Mm. And I know when, when people, you know, when we talk as passionately as we do, it sounds like we're complaining to some people, but, but we have seen progress and we know it's possible. So yes, we are hopeful that our children can even have it better than us. To your, to your point, uh, you said, you know, there's, you feel like, in some situations I'm pitted against myself. You're 100% right, I am my number one competition. And I'm going to win because I am the representation. I don't doubt, I don't doubt I, that, that you're gonna see, win. The, the conversation about representation, I gotta see somebody who looks like me in order for me to believe. No, I am that guy. I am gonna put, I'm going, has I'm gonna belief. put myself I there, love right? That like you that's, have that. that like I'm gonna be that representation. I am that representation every day. Guess what guys? We were all that representation today. So thank you. <laughs> thank I don't know about you. all that. I don't know about all for that. All of, for the, the passionate responses. You're gonna get a bunch of us in the room together. We're not gonna agree. That's just how it is. Yes. So appreciate it and thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not I was just talking. No, you slayed. I almost forgot. I was just talking. I got chills. It was definitely a ride, you know, with some ups and some lows. Fun, interesting, kind of spicy. I was surprised by the stop Asian hate. Quite a few people who were like, it's not a thing. I did disagree with almost everything that they said. I also have found it hard to believe that people think that Black Lives Matter is looked at in some way as fake. I have zero regrets. A lot of Asians in the community actually support Trump because he promotes meritocracy. Love Donald Trump. Meritocracy, can I say that again? He's from Queens, I'm from Staten Island. Meritocracy. We're basically paisans. I think the term Asian Americans should be erased. Asian Americans are awesome. Closing thought on Asian American as a term. It is as creative, open, and complicated as we decide to make it. And we can. Sir. So.